we're seeing, Tom, is a huge amount of what I'm going to call legacy claims against builders and developers for alleged construction defects. And much of this is driven by the macro economy. Homeowners are more concerned, in fact, they're even panicked about the value of their home, and um, they're relatively receptive to the pitches made by plaintiff lawyers that a way to recover some of that lost value is by asserting a construction defect or other claim against the builder or the developer. And um, what we're seeing is a lot of claims that I think are driven by the negative economy. One of the class of claims is construction defects, of course, but we're also seeing um, a broader waterfront of claims to include things like failure by the developer to complete the community. Uh, the number of homes that have been sold and occupied is less than what the homeowner thought was going to be the case. We also see claims for alleged failure by the developer to complete amenities within the community. For example, uh, it's supposed to be a multi-phase community. The developer runs out of money or financing, can't complete common area facilities, can't complete infrastructure, uh, can't complete the community as it was originally marketed and contemplated. We're also seeing a lot of claims by homeowners for fraud, misrepresentation, non-disclosure, and even rescission of the purchase agreements, which puts the developer in the uh, unfortunate position of being faced with having to buy back one or more homes in the community if the homeowner is successful with their rescission claim. The, at the same time, we are seeing a lot of claims driven by what I'm just going to call flat-out alleged product failures. Chinese drywall, classic example. This is something that the home builders and their community never would have contemplated as an exposure, and yet it's turning into a very substantial exposure for home builders and developers, particularly in the southeast. And that's representative of a trend that includes things like Kitech plumbing, ethos, other systemic product type failures. So all of this is creating a really adverse and challenging litigation environment for builders and developers. We've been preaching for a long time here at my firm the importance of a holistic approach to managing the home builder's risks. And that includes everything from good due diligence when you're acquiring land, all the way through the construction process with effective contracts, indemnities, insurance provisions, performance standards, out toward the back end after completion to things like very good long-term customer service, a good warranty program, good relations with the homeowners association, and how do you turn over the common area of the community to the homeowners association? So it's a really comprehensive and I hope integrated approach to managing risk. But despite the home builders' best efforts, um, not all of those risk management strategies have succeeded. Basically, they've been overwhelmed by this tsunami of defective construction and other claims. So that that sets the scene. What's come out of that from the insurance coverage perspective has been very interesting and challenging for the development community. We are seeing insurers being more aggressive than they ever have in the past asserting their coverage positions. And the big issues that the conference will focus on and that I'm certainly seeing and litigating are, number one, is defective construction an occurrence within the meaning of the general liability policy? Number two, if you have an occurrence, is defective workmanship covered by the general liability policy? In other words, is there coverage for the cost to repair the defect, or is there only coverage for the cost to repair the resulting damage? A third big issue is the number of occurrences how many deductibles or how many self-insured retentions are due 
And here we're seeing the insurers uh, being much more robust in asserting that a typical construction defect suit involves not just one occurrence, but perhaps multiple occurrences. The insurer's argument is each individual accident or defective condition is a separate occurrence. So you might have multiple deductibles or multiple retentions due in the same construction defect suit. So these issues are really overarching. They're of national significance and different state courts have come to different conclusions. That's both good and bad. The good news is uh, no matter what position you want to assert, you will probably find a court case somewhere supporting your position. The bad news is it reduces predictability for the development community. It puts them in the position of potentially having to reserve far more than they ever anticipated for their operations in terms of number of deductibles, amount of non-covered damage, and so forth. It also increases the frictional cost, the cost of negotiating, settling, and litigating construction defect claims because you've got these related insurance coverage issues on the table. So that's, that's what I'm seeing. And my conclusion in all this, Tom, is builders need to do even more in their comprehensive, integrated approach to managing and insuring risk in this new environment. And I know that that's a difficult challenge because builders are dealing with reduced staffing levels, fewer people, less resources, and having to do much more with less. But I think in this environment, managing and insuring the risk is even more critical than it was during the boom times because the consequences of not doing so are now really so adverse. <laughs> 